Let's start with the congratulations. You, uh, you don't yeah, clap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, congratulations Thank on you. a one-one-three finish at Pikes yep. in class. The whole crew did well. Everybody involved. It was insane. The whole week leading up to it, or month, was bananas. A lot of people were betting against that we'd even show up on Sunday. We ended up getting there. The team was wild. Weather was with and against us, but we brought home some hardware. Three cars, three podiums. But unfortunately, Pikes Peak does not allow victory nope. donuts. donuts. So the boys came out here, and but Tim, you're gonna do the honors for Raf because he's headed back to France yeah, already. Raf's on an airplane right now. Toss me the keys to do some donuts. Should have put ear protection in. Maybe. I like that they didn't put on burner tires. They just have slicks no, on. No, they still. got the full on race slick. Yokohama slick on. Whatever. <laughs> That thing sounds something evil. It sounds even evil. Congratulations. <laughs> now you've officially you officially won. Put a bow on 2021. So before we get into this version of Lucy, let's talk about old Lucy. You guys remember old Lucy, 2019, TA1 car. We built it with you guys in 22 days. When he says you guys, he means us, not you guys watching. You but guys also? You guys ride. also? And also when he means us, yeah, he came we, by there and build consulted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we really had nothing to do with it at I'm all. I'm not even gonna pretend. Give us some background on Lucy, because Lucy, this is V2 Lucy. Yeah, Lucy.1, we built in a short time frame, but built it kind of the way we'd want to build a 911 to attack Pikes Peak. There's a lot of things that happened on that car that you know we could have tweaked if we had more time, budget, or whatever it was. So fast forward to 2021. Yeah, Lucy V1 was kind of a bag of extra parts. It was a bag of like everything we've been saving to build our own car, you know, and it turned out awesome. I mean, we, we didn't skimp on it. It just, we didn't have enough time. So as we threw it together, we went out there and ended up doing really well with Raf behind the wheel. All Fine doing really well. Set a record, second overall, first in class. Let's fast forward to 2020. We got kicked out of TA1. So we just withdrew our entry with Lucy. But right after that, Lisa and Tom ended up saying, hey, we'd like to buy the car and partner with you on it. We were going back to Pikes Peak with it. 2020 was out of the question because we didn't want to go to open class. And then, so 2021, we started laying it in motion and said, well, if we're going to go back, let's fix all the stuff that we thought we could do better. And let's also, well, now that we have some time, let's put more tire under it. Let's put more power under it. Make it handle better, better arrow. We just tried to elevate all, we didn't deviate too far, but we tried to elevate all the things that made Lucy do well better. <laughs> You want to start digging in what you guys actually have done. <clears throat> the base of this car is a 2015 Porsche 991 GT3 Cup car. This car has laps at the 24 hours of Daytona, Sebring. It's got a lot of pedigree behind it. Then we took that existing nice platform and threw boost at it. That's always pretty- Always a good idea. Always a good idea. Best that's, idea. that's what you need for pikes, you know? Yeah, You're yeah. like, you need 900 horsepower and two wheel drive. Yeah, of course. Then so you gave it 1100 plus. This time. Last time it was 900. Yeah, in general. You don't need an excuse to need that. Yeah, that's yeah. True. yeah, yeah Today we need that. Yeah. Tomorrow- <laughs> If you can turbo it. Turbo yeah, it. right. We started with the tires. We went to Yokohama and just said, what's a good package that, well, can you fit a 12 inch wheel in the front and a 13 in the rear? Put the 2RS rear quarters on it. So that gave us- a so that's a 12 inch front and a 13 inch rear. That's well, a lot of meat. Yeah, Yokohama came through on that. We needed wheels. So we contacted Brian and the Rotiform crew and we started working with, they have a guy back in Italy, Luigi, that we worked with long, long ago. Wait, and that, really? Huh? Really? I'm not kidding. That's not a dad joke. Between Brian and his crew and everybody in Italy, they started coming up with the shape, the design, what forging profiles we're going to use. And then we started doing load testing on them. And then they cut them not too far from here and came through there. Good. All right, now we got to cover everything. We took the 2RS rear bumper from the Club Sport, hacked the bottom of that off so we can make room for turbos, airbox, diffuser. These are actually the metal 
the metal uh, rear fenders, basically like a 991 turbo rear fender, but we could stuff the 13s under there, uh, tubbed it a little bit. And then that also helped us because before we used to pull the air for, from the turbochargers through, I don't know if you remember last, last time there was a big scoop right here. That was getting in the way of rear arrow, so we had to rethink that. So now all the air for the, each turbo goes through here, and then this is all intercooled air through here. So how do you guys design all of that? We work with Virus and Aerosim. Between those two companies, the brain power there is insane. So Virus, uh, you, they're, they're the ones responsible so for the wing. all modeled. All 100% modeled. So Scan Hub came in, 3D scanned the entire car. This front fender right here, for example, is all modeled. When we first drew it out, we're like, all right, well, what I'd like to do is have, I thought we were just gonna have something like this and just have it open. And then they started running it through all the Sims and turned out that the computer says that shapes better. <laughs> Can't you see? This is the perfect opportunity. All these vents are all 3D printed. And if you feel right here, this rolls all the way down into the inside of the fender liner. There's a perfect flow path. So the air that gets trapped underneath the diffuser runs through the inside of the wheel and out here and so it really reduces front front drag and drops the air pressure in the front to increase downforce without drag we actually ran this this exact wing back in 2019 but we had it way trimmed out because we had a front arrow bias of only 21 percent so the back was doing the heavy lifting at 79 percent and we went up to 39 percent front arrow so we went just about as far as you could go with you know actual the weight balance of the car the 60 40 so we're right about there now and arrow balance was awesome this year so they calculated the sea level downforce kind of trimmed out at 2,700 pounds at 160 miles an hour. Up there, we never hit 160. So the car weigh? About 2,600 pounds. So it's, it creates more downforce than it weighs. Jeez. That's how I feel sometimes. Without, <laughs> that's without driver. Uh, that's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> The other big thing we did, typically the 911s have a radiator here, radiator in the middle, and then a radiator there. So you have three radiators. The whole bottom side of it is like the belly of a wing, and then you have a bunch of turning vanes in there. And another thing, you see we 3D printed all this ducting and then did a single radiator out of here. So packaged nicely and a lot of, lot of downforce, and it actually just cleans up the air going through the car rather than you know jamming it around the car. E85, good clean burn. We were messing around with going to methanol, but running a mechanical pump and doing something we haven't really done on a 911 to go there was out of the question, but I think we'll mess with it because methanol just, all, all this stuff makes sense. Another thing we did this year for the first time was we ran dampers that are electronically controlled, some G sensors by all over the car. So there's eight G sensors to measure the difference between- You run with JRZ on G, Yeah, the JRZs. What? You have a 16 G sensor on the upright and a, and a 5G on the chassis. What's cool to me though, is looking underneath how much stock chassis there is under here. This isn't some crazy tube frame special. It's like a lot of factory sheet metal under this. That's what I really like about 911s is that they can go compete with anything out there. I'm not BSing you, I could take all of the stuff in this and put on a streetcar. The mounting points and everything for the bodywork is stock mount. Yeah, all stock mounting points, stock where the subframes bolt into the chassis. That's yeah. all OEM positions and uh, the engine hangs in the same spot. You could literally give me a tub and we can make a street legal version of this with all these parts. After Virus and Aerosim put their heads together and conceptualized it, did all the models, we went to a company called AirTech who helped fill the valley of death, meaning this, we've got a great concept, we have a semi-proven model. Now, how do we produce this? And we're only, we only need to make three sets, maybe four with spares in a timely fashion. So the tooling's a pain, you know, to do this entire splitter, which is, it's massive. And they came through and they actually 3D print the tooling. It's about 10 by 10 by 40 feet long. So like the size of one of these containers, it does a tool change and the CNC machine after, it's, after it cures comes in and just refinishes all the surfaces. And then now you have tooling, it's insane. So instead of and cutting a block, you lay the carbon on it, you vacuum bag it. Between AirTech and Next, it what really made this kind of go. Porsche of Colorado Springs gave us our home base, which is, it was an awesome shop. Trucks, trailer, everything that we needed to basically make it like we had a small mini BBI there in Colorado Springs so we could get everything done. The engine side of things. So we ended up tearing the whole engine back apart, going through it. Jared changed the piston wall clearances from stuff we learned, even down to like how much clearance we have between our valve guides and our valves. We just tweaked all that stuff, put it all back together. And then Mitch and Sander, Mitch from M Engineering, Sander from Obsidian, they went through and started looking at the data from, they're like, oh, we need a much bigger turbo. So call 
called called Tim at Garrett. He sent us a set of 3900s, a set of 35900s, and we just we figured for response and then power versus how much grip we could generate, we the 3900 was perfect, and it actually was really responsive, able to maintain enough power all the way up where we're still in TC where you kind of didn't want to be, but anything more than that would just be a waste. I want to knock you off of your thing, but I want to know what the difference in power was from last year to this year. Do you think it was making about 880 horsepower then? Right, full, full bananas. Yeah. And right now, calculated at the base was making 1100. Wait, so in the base, you mean? 9,000, 10,000. Yeah, 9,000 yeah. 9, some odd. Yeah. Not like a base, too. Yeah, base no, of the base, mountain. Base of the mountain. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. And that's at 9,000 feet. Right. Our rental car could barely get up the hill <laughs> yeah. at 9,000 feet. Yeah. I really like this right here. I'm guessing that's your 3D printed manifold. Yeah, that's the, the air box Jeremy and Dimitri designed and had that printed. And that's what it feeds directly from the air lens. And then we, we've got a pair of K&N air filters in there that they, you know, K&N said, and all the math said that those will each do 900 horsepower, so. Missing the end plate, what, what happened there? Favorite, favorite, favorite part of the entire event, Mike Rostis from, he, he does a lot of the stuff with Optima batteries from an activation standpoint. He called me up one day and said, hey, my cousin Lucy is battling pediatric sarcoma and she's in remission right now, but her name's Lucy. Could we rope something together? And that's a Little Warriors Foundation. You'll see the, the sticker on the other side. So after everything was said and done, they flew out, hung out with us the whole time, came to dinner at the house. They were incredible, incredible group of people. Jeremy had the idea to take the wing off after we secured first place and signed it and gave it to her oh, that's awesome. yeah so that's why we're missing an end plate oh, so man. that's really cool we got one on order from Virus, but uh she's I mean, that whole thing was literally made everything worth it it was yeah, it was, was 100 it was rad i don't know why we decided to cut onions at the same time we were getting yeah her, but you know i think there was yeah. dust or yeah, pollen yeah, dust dust yeah. yeah but there's about 100 people with dust and pollen and yeah, onions yeah, yeah, in the eyes yeah 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 yeah, the the front yeah. Eyes. yeah. yeah. it's for some reason it's happening again right now i don't know what that is you know Yo, this looks like the server room. <laughs> that is the most amount of wires. Are you wires. kidding me? That's way cleaner than the server room. So what is it? What's in here for our transmission? The transmission is a, it's a beefed up Ricardo gearbox that came in the cup car. We run stock cup ratios, but thicker gears and Bill Raider out of Nevada. We have these Pankel tripod axles in here that they're works of art. I was just scared going all that way for- Tell them how much they cost. I'm not gonna say how much they cost. <laughs> That's cool that the stock cup car ratios, like they work on the mountain. Yeah. They worked well on the mountain because we took a GT3 engine and it spins to 9,000 RPMs. And when you overlay the, the power the curve for peak torque, where the drops are, it was pretty weird that it drops it perfectly right before peak torque, so you can just rip through the gears. Anything else? Tom and Lisa own the car, and unlike last year, where, or in 2019, where it just parked at, at BBI, hopefully we'll be able to field it and go do some time attack with it, or do, I don't know, I wanna do more with this thing. It, it's so capable, that's like, I think the homage to a 911, it, they can do so much, you know? Yeah. I'd like to go snow racing with it, I'd like to, I don't know. See, now, now Shrink the talking. rear brakes, now put some talking. big wrinkles on it, yeah. come on this first that. Right. You know, what are we running that's against? a great, we don't tell you. We, we can't tell you, tell you that. Oh, we have to just show up? Yeah, you just show up. Yeah. You could be racing a snowmobile. You don't know. Yeah. This versus that would be fun. In case you missed Pike's Peak, the whole little mini series we did on Instagram, we're going to put it together for you right here, a little recap, where he gets to come home with some, some hardware. Yeah. Congrats again, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, nice work, dude. Thanks, Amazing guys. car. Amazing drive. We're all tired. Car should be loaded in the trailer on the way out. In Colorado, we're a little behind, but we'll get there. We'll push hard and we'll, um, uh, we'll see how this next two or three weeks goes. Back in the same shit again, because this will be the third year in a row that things just seem to happen at the last minute. We're running three cars this year at Pikes Peak. We're running Tanner Faust and they came in the Yokohama Spec GT4 series with Porsche. David Donahue and Sunny car we ran last year in 2020. A GT2 RS Club Sport that we're running in Time Attack 1 with Donahue. And then we have Raphael Astier who's coming back to run Lucy in uh, open class. All right, here we are qualifying for Time Attack and Unlimited. It was raining before, it's dry now. This is kind of just how this mountain works and part of what everyone has to deal with here. That's water, brother. We 
have is a weird issue. We have a idler pulley that broke. Obviously the water pump stopped spinning and then the uh, temperature went through the roof and it blew a hose off. The bad part is this is right before, we have no more testing here, we're done. Um, this Friday was an optional day. Uh, Saturday we set up pits, Sunday we, we race, so we have to have this thing licked. Hopefully we can get some parts overnighted for Saturday AM delivery, we build the car, maybe go to the dyno, or, or what, if, what if we find something catastrophic that can't be fixed, I don't know. But that's where, that's where I'm sitting right now. Originally off of a power steering style engine, right? This boss right here, when you do the belt conversion for the cup with the idler, over time that boss would break off, spit the pulley. The new ones have this whole thing right here is webbed, so that doesn't happen. I didn't know that. Get the car back on the hill. You've got an employee flying out from California yep. with spare parts. He's pulled apart off of an actual engine being built by Porsche. Yeah, on their production line. Man. On the production line. Welcome to Pike Speed. It's like five something in the morning, it's race day, and the line is already miles, like literally miles. We've sat in traffic for, it feels like an hour just to get here, but let's get started. top today that was a bummer but in all honesty as long as everybody got that chance that to me yeah it's always it, about when they cut half the it crate. was almost like a sigh of relief like look we're gonna run up to the top but we don't know what's gonna happen with weather but as long as we're all running up the top i don't care if it's three miles 10 miles 14 miles like right. I, I just like it that everybody can have that level playing field every team at the end of a race will tell you how hard it was but the entire time i've been here i would run into people and they would say oh who are you with and i'm like oh i'm with the bbi boys this time and they'd go ah oh, sorry you guys have had a hard week yeah <laughs> this was a hard fight and it was well earned but i mean it wasn't gonna come easy what do you think was the worst part of the week uh the worst part of the week honestly is letting the drivers down and not being able to have cars on the hill so they can practice because if you look at it david donahue practiced one section and he started to fall into it pretty well that was the midsection he posted the fastest time out of anything except for robin shoots 
in that section by almost a full second. And Robin's in a wolf, yeah, full-blown prototype you race we, car. Can you imagine if we gave David the time that we needed for all of the practices? If we made it and we got him there, I honestly think he had the pace to do some serious damage. But he needs the um, he needs the seat time, which we can't do it again this like this yet next year. We have to get get ahead of it. Next which means you have to start tomorrow. Yeah, like or yeah, yesterday. yesterday yeah. Yeah, 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 let's start yesterday. Tanner was kind of like an easy ride for him. Tanner was great, wildly technical. I mean, he's like a surgeon when it comes to like his feedback and all that stuff. And I just kept saying, drive the car. Oh, there's a small issue here. Drive around it. <laughs> Every time he did, he just kept going faster and faster and driving around. He's a, he's bananas, you know? And it clearly worked because he came in first. And then uh, Raphael. I love Raph. He had a really good start. Section one was good. Yeah. Section two was good. By time section we, three. By the time we got to section three, like if you can look back there, you can see the fog soak, uh, the, the mountain socked oh, in. Yeah. Somebody said he came out of a corner a little bit crossed up. He didn't know that the road went this uh, way and he had to make corrections. And then the mist on the ground started to make it slippery. From what we had last week, his pace was off about eight seconds there. But you know, he made it. And he's still first in class. He's safe. We, we, we get to bring cars home and trophies home. Up top, Lucy, just because we, we could keep it at 1100 horsepower up there. That's where it, that's where that car shines. But if you can't put the power down and you can't see where you're going, what are you going to do? That's the mountain. That's the mountain.